Hello there, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today for one of our weekly webinars here at the Retirement Group. My name is Samantha, and I am in client services here. I moderate these weekly webinars. In just a moment, we are going to be joined by our advisor, Michael Corgett, and he is going to be speaking to ConAgra Brands employees about how you can navigate required minimum distributions, or RMDs. He'll also provide some strategies to potentially help lessen your tax burden. Before I bring Michael on, however, I would very quickly like to remind you that although we work closely with both active and retired members of ConAgra Brands, uh, the retirement group is not affiliated nor endorsed whatsoever by ConAgra Brands. We are a completely independent group of financial advisors here. Please keep that in mind. Uh, after Michael's presentation, I will jump back on with him very quickly to ask him any of the questions you may have entered into the Q&A chat throughout his presentation. Please feel free to ask away. It is completely anonymous and we will answer as many questions as we can, time permitted of course. We do like to respect your time. Uh, and after Michael's presentation, uh, you will be redirected to our contact us page where you can book an appointment with either Michael Corgett himself or one of his colleagues, so please take advantage of that. And without further ado, let's bring on our speaker, Michael Corgett. Thanks, Sam. And welcome to everyone to today's presentation. My name is Michael Corgett. I am one of the firm's retirement advisors and have been for more than 30 years. Uh, welcome to today's presentation. We're gonna talk about a couple of uh, subjects that are on the minds of a lot of our clients and that's RMDs or required minimum distributions and QCDs, which are qualified charitable distributions. Why would you wanna consider a firm like the retirement group? Well, we're a bunch of people, advisors with a great deal of experience. Uh, we have offices nationwide. I myself am based here in St. Louis, but I have clients all over the United States and I appreciate that. We are very knowledgeable on the benefit programs for all the employers that we have focused on. And just to name a few of those employers, uh, AT&T, Boeing and Caterpillar, Merck and Pfizer, Exxon and Chevron, just to name a few. But we work with the employees of a lot of different Fortune 500 companies. Uh, these on-demand webinars are one of just many resources that we offer. We do maintain a library of all of these on-demand webinars on both our website as well as our LinkedIn page. And we also have a YouTube page. You can scan this QR code below to follow us on LinkedIn. And I think you should definitely do that because there's a lot of great information that you'll be privy to if you do uh, follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, we offer a number of other neat resources. We offer retirement guides that we created for most of the employers that we have focused on. Just reach out to the office and we'll email one to you. Um, we maintain our own newsletter as well as our own blog. We also have a great ebooks library, uh, ebooks on all sorts of different subjects. So again, the retirementgroup.com, our LinkedIn page, or our YouTube page, and you will find a resource that I know will benefit you. Finally, one of the probably proudest resources that we offer is our complimentary financial analysis, our, our retire kit our retirement guide, our uh, retirement roadmap. It's a complimentary service. Uh, it's a plan that we'd be happy to put together for you. Obviously it involves a number of inputs, but all you have to do is ask um, one of us, uh, call the office or schedule a meeting with myself and I'll show you how to do that here in a few minutes. Uh, and we'd be happy to put one of these together for you. We know you'll find it helpful. So let's go ahead and dive right in. The overview of Qualified Charitable Distributions and RMDs. First, what is a, a required minimum distribution or an RMD? Well, those are the distributions that people used to think of that at 70 and a half, I, ha I had this distribution that I had to take from my IRA, and if I didn't take it, I'd be penalized for it. Now, I'm going to talk about how those rules have changed here in a few minutes, but it is, again, everyone usually takes a distribution from their IRAs to live off of and enjoy life. If you were very successful in your savings during your lifetime and your IRAs have done very well, you might wind up having an RMD that is excess of what you really need to enjoy life during your retirement years. And a QCD is one way 
of taking that RMD and giving it to a charity or charities of your choice. And we'll talk about that here more momentarily. <clears throat> QCD, again, qualified charitable distribution. State taxes on RMDs, in some cases there are, and in some cases there are not. And does my spouse help an RMD? Your RMDs are typically based on your life expectancy, not your spouse's. Uh, we will talk a, a little bit about inherited IRAs uh, and the distribution schedules on those here as well. But let's go ahead and move forward. Uh, the eligibility for a QCD age requirement, the old uh, IRS RMD mandated years of 70 and a half. In other words, once you're 70 and a half or beyond, you can make a qualified charitable distribution. And it is applicable for all traditional IRAs and some other retirement accounts. But we're going to focus on traditional IRAs in uh, today's presentation. Uh, we'll talk about what the limits are, the tax advantages, and then a couple of scenarios that I think will sort of bring it all together, bring it home for you to, to understand uh, maybe a larger contribution as well as a smaller contribution. Okay. The limits are big an annual limit up to $100,000 per year per individual. So obviously, if you're married, you can make two of these up to $100,000 a year. And how does it relate to RMDs? Well, it is essentially uh, an RMD that you are going to give to charity. Uh, the QCD up to $100,000 is excluded from your taxable income, but it satisfies a portion of or all of your required minimum distribution. And again, I believe the examples I'm going to go through here in a minute will bring it, bring it all home for you. <clears throat> the qualified charitable distribution also uh, positively affects your adjusted gross income because whatever you choose to take as a portion of your RMD is not counted towards your adjusted gross income for tax purposes. So again, you satisfy a portion of or all of your RMD with a QCD, um, and it, you don't wind up paying taxes on that distribution because you're giving that money to charity. So you're doing something that makes you feel better, and, make, and, and charities do make me feel good, and you don't pay any additional income taxes on that distribution. Whatever portion of your RMD that you do keep, Yes, you do have to pay federal, and in some cases, state income taxes on that distribution. You do avoid the penalty, so you definitely want to take these, and I'll talk about there here in a minute. But it definitely, you do have to pay taxes on whatever you choose not to donate to a charity. Um, another benefit of a QCD uh, is far as itemized versus the standard deduction. The 2017 Tax Act changed the, the uh, uh, deduction that individuals and couples have. Uh, it's, it's called the standard deduction, and it more than less almost doubled it. So for a married couple filing jointly, that deduction is $24,000. For an individual, it's $12,500. So in many cases, a lot of folks who used to itemize no longer are able to itemize because the standard deduction is higher than when they file the Schedule A and itemize their deductions. Well, one of the deductions on a Schedule A was charitable contributions. Well, if you're no longer itemizing, you're no longer getting the charitable deductions on your Schedule A because you could take the standard deduction. The QCD reduces your income regardless of whatever way you file your income tax returns, okay? Because it's not income to you. Whereas an RMD is income to you and it can affect your deductions or your deductibility, as well as the taxes that you pay. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Obviously it allows you to support charitable causes. Um, and, a lot, and again, a lot of people have been very successful with their IRAs and have very large balances, and they don't need all of the money that would come from their IRAs 
that would be forced upon them because of an RMD. It allows you to meet your philanthropic goals and, and allows you to be more tax efficient with your IRA and your personal income taxes. Um, the importance of adhering to IRS regulations is clear, and we do strongly recommend that you consult with a tax advisor as well as a financial advisor, and we could certainly point you in the right direction. Um, here's our first scenario. We've got John. John is 75 years old, and he's got $10,000 RMD. Well, he'd like to give 5,000 of it to his favorite charity and 5,000 of it, he'll take his ordinary income. <clears throat> what happens? Well, with a regular RMD, the full $10,000 is taxable to him and in that tax year. The tax implications, if he chooses to give 5,000 as a QCD, is that the 5,000 is not part of his adjusted gross income for tax purposes. The other 5,000 is. And one of the benefits of being successful and having a successful IRA is that having larger adjusted gross income amounts can affect uh, your Medicare benefits, or at least the cost of your Medicare benefits, and the taxability of your Social Security benefits. The first, Medicare benefits, it's called IRMA. And if your income exceeds certain levels, the monthly costs that you pay for your Medicare benefits Part B coverages goes up as your income goes up. A simple example for a single person up to about $97,000 a year. Uh, the uh, current deduction for Medicare Part B is $164 and change this year. Above that level, that monthly amount goes up. It's essentially twice that for a married couple, $194,000. If your adjusted gross income is below that, no worries. But if it goes above that, which it could because of your RMD, your IRMA uh, cost, your monthly cost for Part B coverage goes up. And it's a concern for a lot of folks. As well as adjusted gross income, all of us are, are subject to the ratcheting up of the tax brackets under the current tax, tax laws. So starts out at 10, goes to 12, then jumps to 22, 24% and they're on. So again, Giving money to charity can help both save you on your taxes and not affect your Social Security benefits or your Medicare costs. Um, John's choice with the qualified charitable deduction is essentially he's going to instruct, and this is important, you have to instruct your IRA custodian to send the money directly to the charitable organization. You will get a 1099-R for this distribution. You want to maintain all your paperwork, just in case, but because it has gone to a charity with the, prop, with the proper documentation, you won't have to pay income taxes on it. And then in the other words, he does only pay taxes on the other 5,000 that he took as his RMD, which he'll use however he sees fit. And then we've got a, uh, um, uh, here's a comparison. Again, I really pretty much just talked about this, but again, Without the QCD, he pays taxes on the full 10,000. With the QCD, he only pays taxes on 5,000. And the other 5,000 is it goes to a charity uh, that benefits someone, someone or something that he cares about. We've got Jane here and Jane uh, is also 75 years old. Her RMD is, is a significant one. It's $120,000. She wants to make a $100,000 charitable donation, and she might as well do it with her QCD. Without the QCD, she's, I'm sorry, I went backwards. With the QCD, uh, the regular withdrawal will be $120,000 uh, all the way applied to her adjusted gross income. So it's all taxable. With the contribution of 100000 going to a qualified charity, she obviously reduces her potential AGI by 100000 and only 20000 of her total RMD is subject to taxes, both at the federal and in some cases, the state income uh, tax levels. So again, she has 
decide, she has benefited ch another chair, a charity or several charities. And uh, she's reduced her own adjusted gross income and she satisfied her RMD requirement. So she's killed several birds with one stone, which is a, sh a big benefit to any individual. Um, she's going to, again, instruct her IRA custodian to directly transfer $100,000 from her IRA to the charitable organization. Her RMD is satisfied with that $100,000 donation. And then the other $20,000 is taxable, as I said, to her, um, which, again, reduces her adjusted gross income for tax purposes and all the other benefits that uh, I discussed earlier. Um, without the QCD, she pays tax on the full RMD of $120,000. With the QCD, she only pays tax on $20,000. It's a huge benefit. We have clients, as I said earlier, uh, a lot of our clients have very successful IRAs based on what they've done for themselves and then the growth of their assets, working with financial advisors uh, during their own retirement. And we see a lot of RMDs that can be very excessive. And this is one way of taking the RMD and benefiting charity or charities of your choice while um, also satisfying the RMD uh, that you're, again, required to take. And then uh, let's talk a little bit about RMDs, the recent changes, which is the SECURE Act 2.0. The rules for inherited IRAs have changed as well, potential plan. Uh, penalties, and then planning aspects. Um, understanding the recent changes, the SECURE Act 2.0, essentially, uh, RMD agent was changed from 70 and a half to 72. Well, with 2.0, now it's 73. And the easiest way to understand this is if you turned 72 this year, your first RMD would be start next year. Now, you don't have to take it in 2024. You can actually defer your first RMD. Everyone can defer their first RMD till their tax filing date in the following year. So in this case, you're 72 this year. You've got to take an RMD next year in 2024. You probably should take it next year, but you can defer it until 2025. The only downside to that is that you'll also have to take another RMD for the 25 tax year. So you'd actually have two in the year of 2025. So again, I think it's smart to take it earlier, take it next year. So that was the first thing. If you were 72 in 2022, you had to take an RMD last year by April of, I'm sorry, you had to take one of this year, in April of this year, 2023. So and then you'd have to take another one this year by the end of, uh, of 2023, which is December 31st. So again, we talked about uh, the SECURE Act 2.0. The RMD rules for inherited IRAs have also changed pretty significantly. Uh, they are complex. I'm going to simplify it uh, with some basic discussion on uh, spousal inherited IRAs. So you have an IRA, you pass your spouse inherit, inherits it, they can continue to take distributions based on their own life expectancy, including when they reach RMD rule age, they're going to have to take RMDs. Now, when your spouse passes and it, it, you, that IRA passes on to, let's say, your children, and I'll use children plural, let's say you have three kids and it's given to them equally, they used to be able to spread their distributions out, which number one, had to start immediately. They were called stretch IRAs. Uh, and they used to be able to spread it out over a 10-year period of time. The recent changes have now required non-spousal inherited IRAs. They have to essentially distribute that entire IRA, traditional IRA, over a 10-year period of time. Now, they don't have to spread it out over 10 years but they're gonna to have to take the entire balance out of that IRA and pay taxes on it, even if they wait until the last year to take the entire amount. That might not be the smart thing to do, but again, it's based on each individual's 
situation, which certainly I have several of these going on right now. We lose clients, we lose the spouses all the time. So it just has to be done the proper way. Um, and there are penalties. There, are, there have always been penalties. Um, they've been reduced. They used to be, uh, the, the old penalty, if you didn't take an RMD, was 50% of the RMD that you didn't take. That's a pretty significant penalty. Um, it is now 25%. All financial institutions will keep you apprised of each one of your IRAs. So if you have multiple IRAs with multiple custodians, those financial institutions are required to tell you what your RMD is by essentially mid to late April of the tax year that that RMD is uh, due. Now, you can always find out in January what your RMD is going to, going to be from each one of these financial institutions. And you can uh, basically calculate it yourself, or we can certainly help you calculate it with the uh, RMD tables that are available on the internet. So again, keep that in mind, um, you know, strategies for managing your RMDs effectively. Uh, I mentioned multiple custodians. You know, we all have clients, and in many cases, you have, R have IRAs with multiple institutions with, in different amounts, different values. You don't want to forget about any. So you can take your RMD from Institution A, you could do a QCD with with that uh, RMD from Institution B, uh, and then you know you may be taking monthly income from other IRAs, which also the aggregate total of your distributions towards uh, your RMD applies. You could take your entire RMD from one IRA while not touching other IRAs, as long as you take that RMD total out during that calendar year. Um, a lot of information that we've shared with you today uh, and planning is the key. Uh, a lot of Americans have not put together a plan. So definitely, you know, take advantage of that complimentary financial analysis that we've offered and required minimum distributions are a big deal. IRA planning is a big deal. QCDs is becoming more and more of a big deal as we talk to our clients. Um, you know, I've just touched upon some of the key issues on all of them. Uh, I rec strongly recommend that if you have additional questions to give us a call at 1-800-900-5867 uh, or send us an email to at info at the retirement group, retiregroup.com, retirementgroup.com. You could schedule a meeting with myself or one of my colleagues by scanning the QR code here on the left. And again, the QR code on the right will allow you to follow our LinkedIn page. Um, so again, a lot of information. I appreciate all of your time. Uh, I'm gonna hand the meeting back to uh, Sam, see if we've got any questions that I might be able to help answer. Sam? Hey, Michael. Yes, thank you for that presentation. Uh, let's answer a couple questions before we uh, end for today. The first one, I've heard about Roth IRA conversions as a way to manage taxes on RMDs. Can you explain how this works and if it might be beneficial for me? Roth conversions are, are a, a great opportunity. A Roth IRA conversion, uh, you're basically transferring money from a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA. That is a taxable event. Your RMD can be converted to a Roth. So if you have a $20,000 RMD that you don't need, you could take it, you pay taxes on it, you do have to pay taxes on it, and then put it into a converted Roth IRA and it grows tax-free for the rest of its life. You never have to take RMDs on Roth IRAs. A lot of people use Roth IRAs as a planning vehicle to leave sums of money to their family uh, and to other charities down the road. So again, a Roth conversion, it is a taxable event. You can take your RMD. Uh, you do have to pay taxes on it, but and then invest it into a Roth IRA, and then it will grow tax-free for essentially the rest of its life. All that growth is tax-free. All righty, thank you. Uh, this next one. 
how do I make sure that my qualified charitable distribution is reported correctly to the IRS and doesn't get taxed? Okay, G great question. When you want to take a portion of or all of your RMD and give it to a charity or charities, you communicate with the custodian. The custodian is who holds your IRA assets. With us here at the retirement group, we use Charles Schwab. So we would communicate with Charles Schwab that you want this distribution to go directly to this charity or these charities. You will get a 1099-R for that distribution. You just got to keep all your documentation together if you are ever audited, but it is not a taxable event. Just keep all your paperwork, all your communications, all your records with your with your tax documentation for that given year, and you should be just fine. Thank you. I think we have time for two more. So uh, this third one here. If I want to make a qualified charitable distribution from my art, IRA, do I need to take my RMD first or can I directly transfer funds to the charity? That's a great question. Simply stated, you do not need to take the RMD first, then give it to charity. You want the money to go directly to the charity. If you're right. only going to give a portion of your RMD to the charity, then yes, you direct your custodian to give it to the charity and then the balance of your RMD will come to you and you will have to pay taxes on it. Alrighty, got it. Thank you, Michael. Uh, last one before we end today. How can I use my RMD to make a qualified uh, charitable distribution toward a cause I care about? A lot of interest in the QCD today. Yes, it is. And yes, there is. And, you know, essentially, um, if you have a charity or charities that you care about and you have an RMD or at least a portion of your RMD that you don't need, you certainly can donate that money directly to those charities and get the benefit and the good feeling that you've done something good for something, another group or another individual, whatever it might be. You don't have to pay taxes on the uh, QCD uh, distribution, at, which was your RMD. Uh, makes definitely makes you feel better. Um, and, you know, that's how it works. Take your RMD, the whole thing or a portion of it, direct your custodian to make the checks payable to them, keep your documentation for tax purposes, and you should be good. And again, we look forward to talking to you more about it in the future. All righty, Michael, that was it. Anything else before we end? I, I, I could probably talk some more, Sam, but I won't. I do appreciate everyone's time and attention today. Thank you. Reach out to our office. Give us a call. Send us an email. We'd look forward to talking to you and have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Michael.